Alright, so I just got back from seeing 10 Cloverfield Lane, and um, I gotta say, um, I understand, now I understand why J.J. Abrams said when he was t talking about the movie how he wouldn't call it a direct sequel or, or not even a prequel. I'm thinking like, okay, uh, then why are you, then why have the, the word Co Cloverfield in the title of the movie? But the way I see it, it's kind of like, you know how each season of American Horror Story t tells a totally different story? Or like how each episode of Tales from the Crypt or Tales from the Dark Side tells a totally different story after each episode? That's how I kind of see this, where Cloverfield told, you know, told a totally different story, and it was from like a documentary point of view. It was almost like, you know, found documentary footage. And, um... And then this movie felt like an actual movie where there's music, where it has a music score, and there's no camera, there's no camera involved in it either, and um, tells a totally different story. It has no relations to the events or even to the you know Cloverfield itself. This is like its own movie. So. Um, with that being said, I mean like you know it's just a little teensy weensy nitpick, but. I mean, you, I don't know, you just couldn't, you know, you could have pulled it, you could have gotten away with, I don't know, you could have just ripped the word Cloverfield right out of the movie and let it be a stand on its own, you know? And not confuse people like, isn't it a sequel or a prequel? Or a prequel? Like, what's going on? I mean, I, I don't get it. How is it connected to the other movie? You know, so, so I wouldn't even call this a sequel. I wouldn't call this the second movie, and I wouldn't call Cloverfield the first movie. So, they're like totally separate movies. Like, um, kind of like how, um, you know, how Marvel has their little, um, universe going. You know, like how they're totally separate movies, even though they're in the same... You no, know no, no, never mind, never mind. No, forget about the Marvel topic. <laughs> but, you know, back to what I said, you know, like how American Horror Story and Tales from the Crypt and, and the Dark Side. It's like that, only with movies. And like, okay, this movie's telling a different story. This movie tell a different story. And if they make another one, they're, that's going to be a, a totally different story, I'm, you know, being told, I'm sure. But, um, and the way it starts out, the way it panned out as it went, as it works its way from the beginning to the middle and from the middle to the end, like when it gets towards the middle of the movie and when she, um, when, you know, when she, when, um, Michelle, the lead character, you know, knocks out Ho Howard, you know, John Goodman's character, but, you know, knocks him over the head with the glass, runs up to the, um, runs up to the entrance, and she's like, don't open that door, don't open it! And then, um, you, you look, and, and there's this crazed woman, and her, and her half of her face, you know, looks like it's been infected or whatever, and I'm like, whoa, uh, what's going on here? Like, is she gonna be, like, have some kind of zombie-like virus or something? Like, what's going on here? And you're like, don't open her, don't, you, 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 don't let her in. And, um, you know, like, it, it pans out. And, like, that's how, you know, this movie plays with your mind very slowly. It doesn't throw, show all its cards right away. Like, um, it just makes you think, like, is this some kind of zombie apocalypse thing going on here? Or what's going on? And it turns out, um, well, um, Okay, this is where I'm about to get into some spoilers, so you may want to stop the video here if you have not seen the movie and you want to go see it. Stop the video right now. Are you gone? Okay. Now, um, so it turns out that, yeah, it, it's still, it's still aliens. I mean, well, wait, hold on. No, no, no. Well, in the, um, previous movie, it was just straight up monsters. I mean, you didn't know where, where these where the creature came from or what you know what point like you know what created it what if it was from another planet or whatnot some people say it, it was because um you know in some footage you know you can see that um there's a little bit of a easter egg there near the end of that movie but um with this it's just flat out aliens you know it's almost like war like war of the worlds you know with tom the tom cruise version like how you know there's aliens and then they're you know fucking shit up and then when you see one up close it's like very 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 weird it's very sci-fi like and, and this movie has more of a steven spielberg feel to it uh, i would say you know like how the suspense pans out and how it plays with your mind and you, you, and it's like the, the suspense itself 
you know, just uh, terrifies you more than than what you see, what's actually going on. And um, and John and um, Howard, um, John Goodman's character, he. Uh, <laughs> and um i mean you get the feeling that this dude has been pretty fucked up be like before this alien apocalypse alien invasion even happened i mean like when they start putting pieces together like how how he would say oh megan 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 and then um and um her her uh, i guess her cellmate um i think his name was emmett i think his name was emmett and um he said how um that's not megan i mean that's um th i mean this is like a, a girl that went to um, high school with my little my, my younger sister she ended up missing and then you see a picture of her and howard and you're like oh <laughs> like um I i'm sorry but you know if you know if if you um say you know saved my life and then you have me you know and you and you bring me into your home i mean you know what um, I mean that it, it kind of reminds me of The Walking Dead just a little bit, you know, like how you know Michelle is pretty much you know like um in Rick, you know in Rick's position in Rick's shoes in a way where something ridiculous happens and he and then he wakes up into a whole new world and that's what happens to her in a way because it seems like nothing's going on when we meet Michelle and then when she's going on the road and then all of a sudden this truck just knocks her off the road and then she wakes up in, in like a, a bomb shelter like safe haven-ish place and she's handcuffed to a pole and it's like okay um why you got me handcuffed to a pole like what the fuck <laughs> but um I mean you know like it oh, the only thing like on The Walking Dead you know like down with Rick I mean when Morgan, you know, took him in and he took care of him. I mean, he's too, he took some, you know, he took, um, you know, um, rational precautions because, you know, when in situations like this, this can make people go batshit crazy and fucked up with their minds. And then, and it's hard to trust anybody, you know, like in, in, a, in a kind of situation like that. I mean, I'm not defending, you know, Howard, you know, um, in, in this movie, but, I'm just saying, you, I get the feeling that he was a little cuckoo before, you know, all this happened. Because, I mean, I think that's because he believed that this shit would happen. Like, he just kept preparing and preparing and preparing and preparing himself for it. So, like, someone who's like that can be a little... So, um... A anyway, um... I, I thought it was a good movie. I, th I mean, I thought it was pretty well, well done. I mean, looking back on it, I'm like, it was good. It was good. And, um, I just felt like, you know, it doesn't, it didn't need to have the word Cloverfield in the, in the title, in the movie title. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, with that being said, this movie gets four chair spans out of five. One, two, three, four. <laughs> That's like the most energetic, those are like the, the most energetic, um, chair spans I've ever did. Ever since that Captain America Civil War trailer reaction, <laughs> but um, I'd say if you if you you know, I mean like um, I would you know say like don't look at it as a sequel or a prequel. Don't even think of the Cloverfield. Just think of this as a totally different movie that stands on its own and it has very you know very Steven Spielberg ish shit in there. And um and then when you get to see like um what's really going on by the end of the movie, it's kind of like, you know, it's like um, it's still freaking creepy. I mean, like I think I think I was um, I think I don't know. It just seemed a bit scarier when she was trapped in the bomb shelter with Howard, you know, and how he's just being a, a real dick and a psycho and cuckoo for cocoa puffs, um, bad shit, crazy motherfucker, and um, it's like okay, like. Okay, um, I much rather take my chances out there with those fucking aliens than here, being trapped in here with you. Seriously, <laughs> like kind of like on The Walking Dead. I'm sure people would much rather take their chances with, you know, fighting off zombies, fighting off walkers here and there than facing human threats. You know, so yeah. Um, so if you enjoy my review, thumb up this video. Make sure you click subscribe if you're new to the channel, and share your thoughts on this movie. Do you think? Cloverfield was better, or do you think 10 Cloverfield Lane was better? Um, 
I don't I don't want to compare the two because they're totally different movies and they're both great in their own way and I think they both delivered you know what they needed to you know bring to the table so yeah then um that's it I mean that's all I wanted to say so I'll see you guys in the next video peace out y'all <laughs>